men har forskellige. You have different brain cells. Some are used for reading, some for spelling, some for calculating, and some for your imagination. Some you don't use at all. We really try to meet the children at the level that they're at, whether it's within a single subject or in cross-curricular work. And we really try hard to follow the school's policy that we should aim to focus our teaching on each individual child. I can see that where it's practiced, what we want to achieve, that although we don't have a standard method, that where the work is based on our conceptual framework, you reach the individual child much more effectively. You help each child become much more active in relation to its own learning process. And I find that even the younger children show lots of initiative and start different exercises all by themselves and they find out which things they need to work with and what suits them. How does a toad camouflage itself? I don't know yet, but that's what you're going to find out today. Mm. How will you do that? Uh, read something about it. You'll read about it. Yeah. Have you found a book about camouflage in the collection over there? There. It's over there. No, I haven't. You haven't? Well, should we try and find one at the library? But I've got one in my bag. In your bag? Fine. You go and fetch it then. If you go back to when we started the school development process and asked what's necessary for modern teaching methods, everybody said 70 square metres. If the decision had been made then, we'd have 70 square metres, but no modern teaching methods. Those of you who've got a reading partner should sit with them now. There are lots of situations when the best thing is to gather all 25 children together, but there are definitely many, many more situations where it doesn't make sense. For example, where small teams work together and there are some who want to work alone if they really need to concentrate and improve their own understanding. The weakness could be that there would be some children that we would overlook in the confusion. But I believe we're already aware of and focused on this. It's one of the questions that we asked ourselves from the beginning. What will happen with the weak children? Well, I think that if you're keeping your eye out for them, they're a bit more visible in the new structure than in the old structure, where they could be more easily hidden. Now, in the new structure, you can clearly see if a child isn't able to cope with their schoolwork, and so we can take action to help them. I think the teacher should still assist in the younger classes, and they do. But it's a good method when you're aiming for sixth form, college, whatever. There, it's all about taking responsibility for your own learning. You do that in our class, and that's important. The whites are created to control the blacks, and the blacks are meant to be slaves for the whites, at least for some years until they've reached our level. I think it's the perfect system when you start with it, but it's difficult for some, like us, who've spent some years in a normal school with a totally different way of teaching. So it's difficult for us and the teacher, but for kids of six or seven who haven't tried any other way, it's obviously best. Of course, there'll always be things to adjust, but there always are when you start with something new. It has been a demanding task to readjust. There's nothing as difficult as a change of habits. There are two parts to the flexible school. There's the physical framework and the educational framework. And it's the educational framework that's governed how the physical design has turned out here. So, the flexible school gives you the opportunity to work in ways that aren't just focused on a single class. Children come with so many different abilities today, and in the youngest classes, there's an age difference of several years within the same class, which makes it unthinkable that all the children at the same time will experience a positive start to learning. Ten years ago, when I started as a teacher, there was a lot, not only, but a lot of blackboard teaching. 
but now I spend very little time at the blackboard. I usually bring the children into the largest room we have, and we have many rooms now, where not everybody sits at a table. There I go through a few things at the blackboard, and then they disperse to work in groups with what we've just gone through. So the teacher's more like a consultant, a guide, than I was. Quite simply, the Danish Schools Act states that our starting point should be each individual child's level of ability. And you can do that much better if you don't have all the children sitting together at the same time, because if that was the case, then we'd have to have classes where everybody was at the same level, and that's absolutely impossible. You can't do that. When I think back to my own school days, which, um, by the way, were in this area, then I'd very much like to start all over again at this school. I think we've adapted for future requirements in a way that schools haven't done so previously.